Hello YouTube! Today we are here on the foggy and rainy Faroe Islands and I have a special treat for you. We are gonna go and have a look at Erik Anderas boat. If you don't know him, he's the guy behind the sailing channel called No Bullshit Just Sailing and uh, it's some of the best sailing footage out there. And he has a boat that is very much uh, specifically set up for actual ocean sailing and uh, solo sailing. So we're gonna talk a little bit about his boat, boat I think, and then uh, maybe compare our experiences and uh, and uh, discuss, you know, what equipment we think is important and so on. We are also going to talk about some other exciting topics such as Eric's next voyaging destinations and plans for his channel. There's also a big life change that Eric's gone through recently. But for now, let's continue with the boat. She is called Tessie and she is a Contessa 35. She was built in 1976 and you can clearly see the traditional lines in her design. She's got a classic beautiful hull form with a sleek bow which slices through waves easily, but can also be quite wet to sail. Tessie weighs around 6.5 tons and has just a bit over 3 tons of ballast, meaning that half of her weight is located in the keel, making for a stable platform for Eric's adventures. Hello. Knock knock! Hey. Permission to come on board? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. Before we go outside, because it's fucking awful out here, um, uh, you've had this boat for quite a long time, right? Yeah, since 2004. That's, I think, seven, 17, 18 years now. Yeah. And during that time, you've pretty much gone through the whole boat and you have changed almost everything right yeah i think it's uh, almost uh, the, the hull and the mast is uh, original the rest yeah. is changed out yeah you've changed the engine as well right yeah new engine yeah it is and all the electronics and sails and yeah yeah and, uh, and the shrouds and wires for the mast and yeah yeah so you know i thought we'd start outside and do um see what we have out on the deck because i have noticed that um now I've watched a few boat tours on YouTube and it's the, the people do the wrong thing they go like immediately like inside the boat because okay everyone's excited like interested about the interior but it's the stuff that's outside that actually matters right mm -hmm. it is that's what's keep you moving yeah and what keeps you kind of like safe and and uh, you know that's what you need to have in in order mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So we go to the bow first. We start start out on the end of the bow split. Yeah. Right now I don't have the. This is for the gen genocker. This is what you call a torsion cable. You can't twist it. It's like. Yeah. It's so, so it's like an unstayed genocker, right? Yeah. So you fur you fur it's, it's a top down furler. So it starts furling the genocker from top and and downwards. Yeah. And but I, I lost it in the North Sea now, so it's I grabbed it and it's in the bag behind there. So but I'm yeah. gonna furl it up. Yeah. In this. And how have you found this kind of system to be for um, solo solo sailing? Oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's quite. Yeah. You haven't had it for that long, right? No, it's it's the first uh, long range trip I'm. I'm uh, uh, testing it now yeah so so to be alone with this is uh, it's amazing it's just like a regular furlough yeah like, like this yeah so so it's it's really easy you just have the lines to the cockpit and you drag in one of them and the, the whole thing just comes in and yeah. out and it's really easy to deploy it as well do you have a hang hanged on uh, jib here yes this is a jib sail on yeah. uh, its own uh, stay yeah uh, I used this when I I, I tried this uh, along from Haugesund to, to, to here now a lot and yeah. I found out that it's it's actually better to, to put a couple of reefs in the in the main sail and fly this full and then have a reef Genoa as well because then you get the center of gravity a little bit lower yeah and the boat heals less and you maintain the same speed as you would uh, with full sails without yeah. this but full Genoa and full main sail and the boat heals more and just more stress and uh, this is much less stress on the rig when you have, yeah. have this one as well 
So I said that maybe we could compare our experiences also a little bit because I had with Sylvia, with which I sailed also in the North Sea and up to Svalbard, it was the same size fiberglass boat. Yeah. And it was quite similar in many terms. It was a little bit newer and a little bit more cruising oriented, but, but still, you know, the, about the same size. Mm. And I never had an inner, inner forest day and I wish, always wish that I would have one. Yeah. And I've al also seen in your videos that um, you, you were using the same system that I also had, that you just had to have like a feral Genoa mm. and it's not very optimal, right? Now it's, uh, it's not, it's not, it's not, yeah. it's not uh, yeah, it's a, for me it's a new, new experience, positive experience too. When, when you get this, you, uh, I, I can't believe I could put up with just a Genoa for 17 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is actually amazing. Yeah. Did you have to make any additions to the to the rig? Uh, uh, well, so, uh, so it's a solid state; it doesn't go all the way up. So no, it's uh, I I I've watched watched the mast uh, when it's windy, and I can see it it's, it bends a little bit, so I should uh, sideways. Yeah. Uh, and forwards, so mm -hmm. I should uh, maybe put up some uh, stays to, yeah. to put the mast back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's okay, but uh, with time maybe I'll, I'll try that. Okay. Next time. Okay. And then you even have a baby stay here to keep the mast even. Yeah, that's better uh, supported. Yeah, it's a masthead. It's a masthead rig, and you can see the spreaders are coming straight out. Yeah. So they don't. They are not angled aft. So I need some support back in, uh, in front of the mast and the stays in the, in the back of the mast. Yeah. And it also reduces the pumping of the mass when you go into the seas by engine. Yeah. The mass is yeah. It's rigid. And other than that, it's like forward of the mast, it's everything is pretty um, standard, right? Yeah, it's not uh, not anything fancy. I, I like to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. Not and it's much. also I like this uh, how it's not so cluttered here, you know, the, and the, it's also quite flat, so it's easy to it's yeah. easy to walk on here. Yeah, and this uh, when you get ocean on deck, it just flushes straight over yeah. instead of catching up on thing. And then here in the aft, the mid section. Yeah. You have a lot of winches. It's a lot of winches, and uh, it's original. This is how they made it in 1976 on the on the Contessa roof. And uh, quite frankly, I I don't know why they did it this way. But uh, because this is the winches for the for the for the lines for the reef and the mainsail. Yeah. So it's three reefs and it's one winch and also for the halyards. So I have to come on deck to hoist the sail and to reef the sail and uh, yeah. So it's quite a can be a quite. Uh, you have job. a you have a separate winch for each function, you know. Yeah, I have. I mean, I've seen two or maybe four winches, yeah. but six is kind of. <laughs> Extreme. <laughs> yeah, it is. I thought many times to take the halyards and uh, lines back to the cockpit, but I, I, I'm so used to this uh, that it's not a problem for me. I'm, I d I've done it for 17 years on the boat now, so. Yeah, that is actually a, a somewhat interesting as well because me, I also had my reefing and halyards at the mast, and you know, there's some people that say, hey, you need to have it back in the cockpit it's more more secure and then there's some people who say no it's better at the mast mm. I don't know yeah. I don't really know what the optimal solution is actually I think, it, I think it's from sailor to sailor what yeah you prefer. because the advantage with advantage with having it on deck is, is that you, you don't have a ton of rope in the cockpit all over like spaghetti yeah exactly especially when you start having things like the Genacker sheets or yeah. spinnaker sheets in there and, yeah. and oh. of course one of the advantages is that you don't have as much um, uh, friction you know for yeah. the, the lines have a lot less friction mm, that's also true so I mean I had I had the halyard on Sylvia at some point I had it led back to the cockpit and then so we couldn't really hoist the mainsail anymore because you know because from the from the mast it's so easy you just pull down yeah, yeah. and you can use your body weight and everything yeah it is it's a kind of difference and then that's actually the worst system that i had for a while that you have the halyard in the cockpit 
but the reefs here yeah. and then you have to be running like back and forth so yeah, yeah. at least me. at least you want to have them all in the same place i think yeah yeah i'm happy with this system it works for me and uh, it's it's quick to when you know the system it's quick to, to refit it's no problem yeah you just drag the sail down you release the halyard and then you wings on the on the reefing line and that's it yeah yeah pretty much i also have to have this boom break i don't know if you're familiar with that yeah does it work well uh, actually when the line is dry it works fine but when it's wet it's kind of, kind of sticky and it's uh, it likes uh, ah. yeah it like skips yeah like it goes like this and it's terrible noise from it so so okay. when, but yeah so I'm, I'm, it's it's good enough but it's better than not having it i would say and that's the what brand is that do you know that's uh oh I can't tell that. Wal is that boom break yeah it. so this is a break it's supposed to break the boom down the this yeah not not uh, stop it but just break it yeah that's the idea. Yeah, and you have the. the uh, I have this one Genoa track here, and uh, that's of course for obviously for the Genoa. But I, I since I had the jib sail as well, I have the sheet for the jib sail here, so and it goes on the same track. So it's a little bit cluttery, but uh, a better option would be to have a, a, another track for the jib sail. But, uh, but it works works well. And then last but not least for the stuff that we have uh, on the side is of course the cockpit and uh, I can really notice here a big difference to to Sylvia which was uh, a Benetton made actually for a charter use and it has a huge cockpit I mean this is actually quite a big cockpit as well but Sylvia had even bigger cockpit and it was wide and in comparison to this it was um, like quite unprotected so I have to say like this looks really good for for actual sailing. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> pretty deep, so you feel safe in here. When you sit in the cockpit, you have big, high sides, side walls. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that is really, really quite deep. Mm -hmm. Old school, old school cockpit in that way. Yeah, it is. From the 70s. Yeah. If we start uh, all the way from the from the back, we have your power generation system and your and your hydrovane there, right? Yeah, it is. I use that for uh, when I uh, sail over the ocean. So, uh, of course, I dump this uh, what and see in the ocean and I just keep it there. And that's uh, that's how I charge my battery. So, w with this in uh, uh, and with my uh, consumption, it goes slowly down a little bit, but very slow. So, uh, I can sail for uh, I think 40 50 hours without having to charge. So, uh, that's, uh, that's a really nice system. And uh, for the hydrovane, I use that also when uh, when I'm offshore, uh, and it steers very good, pretty good. It, downwind, it, you will go in S's like this, but uh, when you have the wind on the side and f forward, the, the line is pretty straight. So it's a really neat system. And uh, if the going gets a little tough, I, I use the autopilot. Yeah. So that's actually one interesting thing that I wanted to talk about. I still. Um, is the autopilot and the wind vane because we are both um, we both happen to be uh, Raymarine ambassadors and on Sylvia I, I had a full uh, Raymarine electronic set and on um, on Arctica we don't have that yet but uh, we will probably have that at some point but I've always been wondering about the autopilot and the wind vane and so you are saying that the if you in terms of absolute like steering performance the um, uh, autopilot is better yeah it is it's much better it goes on a straight line almost uh, whatever you throw on it it, it just steers the boat perfectly yeah i'm uh, impressed, impressed of it and i guess you also have the same uh, autopilot that i had the um the drive unit is the linear yeah linear yeah. drive unit from raymarine yes the liner drive and uh, it's the evolution one system. Yeah, it is. Yeah, really nice. On longer passages, you tend to use both, though, or 
Yeah, well, uh, actually, in uh, in low winds, I used autopilot because uh, it, it depends on weather and winds and uh, weather directions. And the downwind in, in in low winds, I think maybe uh, the, the higher winds seems to steer well, very much like an S. And yeah. That, that's when I used autopilot. When in, the more wind it is, the more stable the, the higher wind actually is. Yeah. And the thing that I noticed myself, or I never had a hydro vein. But then the autopilot is kind of um, the first thing that's necessary anyway, because you kind of almost, yeah, it's almost needed to, you know, ho hoist sails and so on when you are alone. You pretty much need the electric autopilot anyway. Yeah. And then I was always thinking of, yeah, should I get a hydro vane or, or something? But in the end, I never, um, never ended up getting one. But that's also, of course, um, because of the type of sailing that I do, I don't do as many long ocean passages that as, as you do, so no. I didn't think it was necessary in that way. Well, you will come a long way with the autopilot. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah. As long as you want. As long as you have uh, electricity on board. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and the, thing, the thing for us is that I always thought that if I need electricity, then I'll just charge once per day with the engine, you know? Yeah. Uh, with 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 my needs, you know. Can you tell me what that is? This is a tiller pilot for uh, for the hydro vane. So if something happens to the main autopilot, I can lock off the wheel and I can set put this on like this. Let's go <laughs> going down here. And then you can steer the the, the hydro vane rudder with this. You yeah. Just set the course and yeah. So it's like a third way of steering the boat, a uh, third automatic way of steering the boat. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah. It, it works well by engine, but uh, if you're sailing, you shouldn't have too much sail up because it's it's really uh, it's not too strong, so it uh, it doesn't give too much canter rudder before it gets too weak to to turn the rudder. So, yeah. so it's absolutely a emergency thing. Yeah. To have. Do you have an emergency steering for the for the rudder? Yeah, it's uh, it's in here. If you have it uh, placed here, so it's easy access. Oh right. And then I can. Uh, put this in. And then I have can have ropes to the to the bullets. To, to maybe have some kind of uh, emergency steering setup, but the lines maybe pull the lines back forwards into so I can steer from the from the in under the spray hood or I don't know. And I've never tested it, but uh, I hope I never need to use it. That's very clever that you have the um, eyes there already in the in yeah. the pillar. Yeah, that's quite clever. Yeah, because and I, and I really like this that you can just push it in and it's ready. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should have a bolt go like this as well to, to lock it off, but I think if you have ropes here, it will be good enough. That's my theory. My cables in here snapped one time I uh, was going to take the boat uh, into the harbor. And I was like, shit, what did I do here? And uh, where is the damn steer steering tiller? And I was, it was way on the bottom, under the, under the cans, so I had to drag up everything. And <laughs> so That's, after that... yeah. After that, I made this. Yeah. So the last thing that I wanted to ask about before we go inside is, of course, the the Raymarine stuff here. Because, well, I don't know how you work um, when you are alone, but the truth kind of is that when I'm sailing alone, at least, you know, I kind of have to depend on the instruments. And no, now you have. Um, it's interesting because on Sylvia, I had quite the minimal minimal setup in many ways but now you actually have some like really interesting gadgets here <laughs> yeah yeah well i have uh, two uh, axiom 9 pro hybrid touch uh, chart butters one on starboard one on uh, port side and uh, autopilot and uh, wind on this screen this is, and uh, i've also have one uh, seven inch uh, chart plotter inside which uh, everything is hooked up to the one inside 
So the reason for I uh, have two is because I like to have the charts or the, the radar on the port side and uh, and the, oh, the chart on the starboard side because then I can see that then I can compare it together when, when I navigate in in, uh, in in between scarries and rocks and uh, in tight tight areas. And it's a it's a really good system. I, I really enjoy using it like this. And you also have, I think you have a full video of the systems that uh, are yeah. you have on the board. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna link it uh, down in the description or up here in the video if I can. Um, but you also have um, some cameras, right? Now you have yeah. the Raymarine camera system. On, yes, right? uh, I installed one camera on the on the pole on the stern here, and one camera pointing forwards on the, the top of the mast. So that means when I'm downstairs, uh, when you solo sail, you need to rest a lot and you are going to be downstairs and you are not able to see what's happening around you. So having the camera like this, the, the pointing forwards to see what happens with the sails and cockpit and things around, it's it's really comforting. And like uh, also with... Uh, let me switch it over. And with the mast top camera as well, you have full oh, that's overview. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. It was uh, much better than I uh, expected when I tried it the first time. I was like, "Wow, this is that's actually really helpful." Yeah. To to lie down, be on, uh, lie down in the in the bunk and uh, can be able to look at this, because if it's nothing on the screen in front of you, that there is actually nothing there. So another feeling of uh, safety right there. On top of a normal camera. Tessi also now has an Oscar collision warning system with its own camera at the mast top. Also at the top of the mast is the wind meter and a VHF antenna. So it's very nice and cozy in here. You have the full wooden interior. Yeah, <laughs> it is the old, old school style. Yeah. So it's really cozy, like a little cabin. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you can stand there. Yeah. yeah, that's the only place. Yeah, you are. Oh. You are taller than me. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. The layout inside is like most sailboats of this size. There's a few special features though, like this cleverly designed rotating screen, which Eric can use while resting on either of the settees. The pilot bunk is just mostly used for storage. Oh, but it is actually um, a wet area, you know. You can, you could have like a shower here or wash yourself a little bit, right? Yeah, you could. It drains into somewhere. Yeah, it just drains into the, the to the bottom of the boat. Yeah. It's a terrible system there because the, the bottom is actually pretty flat, and it's no, uh, it's, it doesn't go anywhere. It just slops around in the whole boat. Oh, you don't have a keel well at all? No, it's like yeah. That's maybe the down thing with the boat. Yeah. That's rainwater coming yeah. down from the mast. So yeah. we have to uh, have to, and this uh, just goes out to here and out to here and just slushes back all the way. Yeah. So it's uh, too, yeah, too and it's a little bit. It's quite shallow, so if you even get, you don't have to get much water, and then when you heal, yeah, it's all over it's the all place, over, right? Yeah. And it reaches uh, if it's a lot of water, it, it can reach the electronics, like the freezer. I have this. Uh, Oh uh, yeah, the compressor, yeah. Yeah, so they really heal over. You can see the water coming up. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, but I I, I drain out the boat uh, before I go, usually. Yeah. To take out, out all the water, then I go because it takes a long time to to get that amount of water from the from the mast again. It's uh, it's many days. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so what do you think is going to be next for, or what do you plan for the like for the future of your YouTube channel? Uh, well, I'm, when I'm completed this Greenland uh, expedition, I'm uh, gonna go home and edit it, of course, and make yeah. make five or six uh, uh, episodes of it. Yeah. And when that's done, I'm gonna uh, I'm planning on going to the west uh, uh, Scotland, Hebrides, oh, okay. through, and then go uh, back to the Caledonian Channel and back to Haugesund, Norway. Oh, okay. It's about a two two and a half weeks trip. 
Okay. Is that something you plan to do like next spring or winter or? Well, I think it will be uh, January, maybe March next next year. Yeah. I so think. Yeah. winter. Winter, winter conditions. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Because <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to Svalbard in uh, May, so I have to do it before. That. Yeah, I have to be back. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's the plan. So it's exactly. important to have plans to, uh, to not have an empty sheet. You always need some plans. Yeah. In the future. Yeah. Mm. And I heard um, I heard a um, rumor that uh, you are now planning to do the sailing um, stuff uh, kind of full time. Yeah, that's Is that uh, something that you want to talk yeah, about. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit crazy, but uh, I quit my uh, work after nine years in November last year. Yeah, because I wanted to to do more of this. Yeah, and uh, I love to do it, and I I was kind of. Why am I going to work every day? And I didn't enjoy going to work every day. And I enjoy this so much with YouTube and making films. So why, why, why not yeah. listen to yourself and give it a shot? Yeah. So I quit and uh, I took some small jobs to get some money after that. Yeah. And then I quit that as well. So, and then I traveled from uh, from Norway now. And now I'm here and I'm, I'm without job and I'm just relying on the income from the videos okay. and, and the social media. So see, see, see what happens. Yeah. So it's exciting. Yeah, yeah so you just have to try. It's, yeah, there's no, there's no right or wrong day to try. You just have to do it some, sometime. Yeah. So my plan is to to make that work. So, so somehow. Mm -hmm. So pro provide good videos for people, and I'm sure they some of them want to support me. So some way. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, the content that you do is just so different that you can, you know, you have your own audience. Pretty much already, you know, you have a loyal audience already, so yeah, it's nice, really nice. Yeah, and lots of nice comments, and people are very positive, and uh, and uh, no, it's very few trolls. Yeah, <laughs> so it's very, very, it's fun to do this when yeah. it is like that. And it's, it fuels you with energy to for the next one to, to come. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. How do you find the editing process to be for the for the videos? Uh, it's long, <laughs> yeah. very long. I used six months on the on the last trip last year. Yeah. On five episodes. Yeah. I had to take a little break in between just to have a little break. Yeah. So but back then when you were still working as well yeah. or yeah, then I was working eight yeah. to four every yeah. day. So then I did the ed edit on the nights. Yeah. But now I, when I'm free, I, I reckon I'm, I'm gonna do the edits more more quick. Yeah. Uh, you have more energy. You don't have to go to work. You don't have that hanging. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. So you can use all the, your energy to, of, on, on good stuff like editing and just yeah. have fun with it. Yeah. And hopefully make great videos. Yeah. And do you do you enjoy the process of editing as well? Or? Um, it's it's heavy. It's uh, no okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. If, if I have some good shots, then it's really nice, uh, fun yeah. to, to edit it. But uh, if it's fine weather and clear sky and all that, it, it, it gets <laughs> some, Yeah, it's boring to edit. But you have to do it because it is a part of the story, and you have to show it. So yeah, yeah. So you can't, you can't just cut it out either. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, then you have a three-minute video with nothing. Yeah, I mean, I've noticed, I've noticed the same that yeah. sometimes. When you yourself think that the story is not so good, then you get a little bit bored of the editing. Yeah, you do. But if, then if you do, if you're still in the end, you know, manage to complete it, then there might be a lot of people who are still interested in it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Often the ones you don't like yourself is yeah, just exactly. really black posters yeah. for uh, people to watch. Yeah, so. that's what I wanted to say as well. Yeah, yeah, it's impossible to predict it as yeah. when, when you sit there. Sorry, I had to cut that a little bit short because I got some problems with my camera gear. It was just so wet outside that uh, my camera got wet and started malfunctioning. So I might probably have to cut the um, tour a little bit short, but I think we got the most important things. And Eric is a super nice guy. People are always a little bit different when you meet them in real life. You know, this was the second time that I met Eric and um, yeah, he's a very nice uh, gentle soft-spoken guy actually in the end um, if you haven't seen his channel yet then go ahead and um, check it out um, i'll put it down in the description like i said uh, some of the best sailing videos out there 
and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.